Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be using the Lazy Girl Method to do a really cute Halloween inspired look. We're also going to be reading some confession stories. Let's get right into it. Okay, the next story. When I was a senior in high school, in the beginning of the school year, we had to do a project where we had to do a presentation and show how to do something step by step. I picked making chocolate chip cookies, so when I was going to present, I had to show a step by step on how to make them. I had to bring in milk, eggs, bowl, etc. We had three weeks to plan for this project, but it was the day I had to present and I didn't prepare or bring anything. As soon as we got to school, I went into my English class and told my teacher I didn't have anything because my mom and dad got into a fight two nights before and my dad kicked us out and we've been living in a hotel. She said that it was okay and she would give me credit for my written part. The next week when I was in third period, I got called into the office. The school therapist was there and told me she wanted to talk to me. She asked me if everything was okay at home and I didn't want to have to do my project and get caught lying, so I kept with the story that my dad kicked us out. I started crying, and the therapist told me she would like to see me once a week. So I went to therapy my whole senior year to avoid doing one project. My first job as a 16-year-old was at an obscure indie movie theater on the well-off part of town. During holiday season, we were required to check $50 bills and $100 bills for counterfeit. A man comes in and orders a large popcorn, then whips out his $100 bill. I swipe it under the counterfeit machine and it doesn't flash green. I verbally express, huh, weird, the machine's not working. Then I use the counterfeit pen and drag it across the bill. The mark turns black, indicating that it is not authentic. I look at the bill, I look back up at him, I look at the bill again. I know I should ring for my manager to come out, but I'm standing two feet from this man, all alone. How am I supposed to discreetly deal with this? Being young and alone, at the front, I did not want to make some sort of scene, or cause him to get angry or run away. I think to myself, what the hell? No one would use counterfeit money at the movie theater anyway. If it is actually fake, he probably doesn't even know it. I just continue the transaction, and he walks out with his popcorn and says, have a good day. And then I realized. He came into a movie theater just to buy a $5 bag of popcorn and pay with a $100 bill. This man gave me a fake $100 bill so he could get $95 legitimate cash in return. I never said anything about it to the managers. Even a few weeks later when they asked the whole staff where it came from because I thought I would get in legal trouble for accepting it. Oops. The next story is called, I lied to my blind neighbor and told him that I moved away. Many years ago, I was standing on one of my balconies when a taxi driver was obnoxiously blowing his horn out front and yelling for a blind man to walk towards my voice from his own townhouse. That direction was towards traffic. My roommate and I went down and helped him to the taxi and scolded the driver for being so rude. I made the mistake of giving the blind neighbor my phone number so that I could give him a ride in the future. Then the phone calls came and never stopped. And when I gave him a ride, he would ask for various detours. I'm very calculated by nature. If he had told me beforehand where he wanted to go, it would be cool. But nope, we'd be driving along and he'd throw in two to three extra places on each ride. And it came to be every day that he wanted rides. He'd even call me to remind me to give him a ride. Not that, that, was, not that I was ever late or backed out. Finally, I had enough. So I gauged how blind he was. His response was that he was as blind as a bat. A week or two after he said that, I told him I had a job interview in the next city. A week after that, I told him I got the job and was moving away in a month. After I moved away, it was strange as hell walking by him in silence as he stood on the sidewalk. Okay, next story. 
This happened 11 years ago. My best friend and I were in eighth grade and we were walking out to our PE class. I carried my drawstring backpack in my hand, which held my gym clothes and a combination lock to attach to the locker in the changing room. My best friend was super hyper and decided to pinch my shoulders in a way that really hurt. I asked her to stop, but she wouldn't and instead laughed about the pain she was inflicting on me. I knew the the combination lock was in my drawstring bag, so without thinking too much about it, I swung the bag and hit her face with it. It hit her eye and she ended up getting a black eye. I apologized and she was sent to the nurse. Later, when I was called into the principal's office, I lied and said that I didn't remember that the combination lock was in there and assumed she would just get hit with a bit of fabric. I didn't get in trouble. I did feel bad about giving her a black eye. I didn't realize it would actually injure her to that extent. I was about 11 or 12 and I was at the movies with my family. We were watching one of the Twilight movies. After the movie had ended, we waited for the credits to roll and got up and left. We were the last people in the movie theater because we always waited for the very end. Me, my mom, and my three brothers were leaving the movie theater when I realized I had forgotten my drink. I ran back up to the top of the theater to grab it and I saw a wallet sitting on one of the seats. Me being a curious 12 year old, I opened it up to see tons of cash. Well, to me at the time. I thought of putting it back and leaving it or turning it in, but I really wanted to buy a map of all the packs for BO2 and my parents wouldn't help me with it. I grabbed all of the cash out of the wallet and threw the wallet away. At the time, I didn't realize the hassle of getting new credit cards and a new license. I still feel so terrible about it every single day, and I hope the guy whose wallet it was is doing good. Since then, I've become better. I always give homeless people money and food. I occasionally pay for the person behind me at the drive through but it hasn't helped me shake the feeling that I'm a horrible person. So when I was 13 years old, year nine here in the UK, my school took me to a bowling alley with an arcade as our Christmas trip. When we were done on the lanes, we got to the other arcade area, and as I walked to the back, I saw our worker putting a fresh roll of tickets into the zombie shooting game. However, he was then called by another worker to the manager's office, leaving the full roll, still in the plastic wrap, sitting on top of the cabinet. I decided to seize my opportunity and take the roll to the ticket machine and put them all in. I also collected a few scattered tickets on the floor. It ended up at around 5,200 tickets. That was enough to buy anything they had, including the top prize of a red PS3 Slim 320 gigabyte. I don't know why they had this as a top prize in 2019, but I'd rather this than the notebook director's cut on Blu-ray or something. With a controller, cables, and a copy of the original Mirror's Edge, this was about 5,000 tickets, giving me 200 to buy something else. I immediately knew as I lay eyes on it that that was my big spend. Those things go together for around $100 online, so I'm really getting money for nothing. I ended up getting some Far Cry themed red diffusion air freshener to give my mom. It was either Far Cry or Naruto, and I doubt my mom knows what that is. At Christmas to try to soften the blow of telling her that I scammed a bowling alley and got a PS3. She ended up telling me off for taking the roll of tickets but admitted that she was proud of the good deal I got with the PS3. This story is titled, I Stole Weed From a Patient. As the title suggests, I work in a hospital as a receptionist. To be more specific, I work in the ER. One day on a regular shift, a patient of Jamaican origin is rushed in with a gunshot wound to the leg. I book him in on the system and I'm a bit concerned as this is obviously a severe injury although I know he is in good hands, as the doctors and nurses in this ER are very good at their jobs. After a while of him being tended to, 
by the best doctor on the shift at the time, he is moved to a different part of the hospital and appears to be doing in better condition. I continue with my receptionist duties as normal. Around 30 minutes after the gunshot victim had been moved from the ER, the doctor saw him and came to my desk with a small container. He said, my other patient left this in the room. I think it's weed. Can you please dispose of it? I took the container and quickly inspected it and put it to the side of the computer hidden from sight. Luckily, the container sealed the smell as I could see it was definitely weed. At the end of my shift, I packed up my things ready to go home and slipped the container of weed into my bag and took it home with me. Okay, this is the last story for today. It was my sophomore year of high school. It was the first day back after Christmas break and all of my lunch table friends were still on their vacations. So there alone I sat. I had a pack of baby carrots and I wasn't exactly going to eat them. I noticed they had a lot of moisture. I squeezed one as hard as I could towards its end and it flew up about a foot and landed on the table. Interesting. There was a trash can about 20 feet from me and I figured I'd try to aim my carrot hand cannon at it and see if I could make any baskets. One carrot, two carrots, three carrots, no dice. Fourth carrot is locked and loaded, but I got ahead of myself and it flung 500 miles per hour backwards. Ow! I hear a girl scream. I turn around and as it turns out, my carrot hit her in the face. Her face in her hands, like she was holding back tears. Who the fuck threw that? Her 8 foot, 400 pound linebacker boyfriend boomed. I cowered in my seat, kept my head low. But then I realized that I would look more suspicious that way. So I turned around and acted shocked like everyone else. I chucked a baby carrot at a girl's face and acted like nothing happened. I, unbeknownst to everyone else, became the mystery carrot flinger that year. Alright, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Have a great day or night, and stay safe out there.